Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Harley, Kevin Gray. <laughs> How are you, Joe? Good. Good to see you, Michael. Good to see you. Big things ahead of us. Good. Good to see you, Michael. Good to see you. John Coltrane. Big Luke things Train. ahead of us. Good. Good to see you, Michael. Good to see you. There's a loop you, happening. Yeah, are you hearing an echo? Good to see you, Michael. Do you have your microphones on? Yeah, are you hearing an echo? It wasn't doing it before we went live. Do you have your microphones Yeah, are you hearing an echo? It wasn't doing it before we went live. Do you have your microphones Yeah, are you hearing an echo? That's terrible. It wasn't doing it before we went live. No, we have a terrible loop here right now. That's terrible. It wasn't doing it before we went live. No. Does Rachel have any ideas? I think... I, I think it stopped. Oh, it stopped. Oh, yeah. It stopped. Oh, great. Sorry. Okay. Sorry for this start. I'm very that was scary. Sorry. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, if only we knew an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> then, right when you need one, Joe. I know. Okay. Once more, still a big topic, still a big thing. John Coltrane, mm. Blue Train. Mm. You Yay. already made the big announcement. And Absolutely. we are here to discuss this release and its varieties. We are here to answer a lot of questions if, if, if you have one. And let's just start. Maybe we go into the announcement. It's due to the 16th of September. Am I right? And uh, the release is the 16th yeah. of September uh, worldwide. And um, so we're actually one day off of the date of recording. Date of recording is September 15th, uh, 1957. Okay. So we're close, but one day. Quite close, quite close. Quite close. So we <laughs> will see a stereo with, with extras, right? Yeah. Maybe we start Maybe with this. this. This guy right here. Uh, okay. Oh, this is quite big. It's, yeah, yeah. It's um, two, two albums, and it's got, um, you know, a uh, booklet, some photos that happened. There was a lot of photos taken at the session. Wow. Which was pretty cool. And then uh, Ashley Kahn um, uh, was contracted. He, he's an expert on train. And does really nice um, liner notes, and uh, I'll, I'll skip through the rest of the book. But we also give you people like to see master tapes, so we show you all the master tapes. Little little master tape porn in there, and then the second uh, release, or the second LP in here has um, all the surviving outtakes for the session. Cool. Uh, one question for the outtake, Kevin. Did you also master them from analog tapes? The Absolutely. Ah, oh, cool. Wow. First time? Yes, for me. Yeah. They have, yeah. They've never been on vinyl. Um, and four of the tracks have never been released anywhere. Right. A, a couple were on an RVG release or something, right? Uh, there was... Well, on on a CD. On CD, there was a... Um, yeah, right. No, it doesn't. Yeah, there was a... I think they called it Ultimate Blue Train. This might have been in 97. Mm -hmm. And there was a couple of extras on that. So, yeah, this is the whole thing. And we, we left in not tons of chatter, but, you know, if there was some relevant... Um, it's fun on, on uh, a few of the takes. You can hear them talking about um, Lee Morgan says he wants to do some trade some fours with Philly Joe. Okay. And um, Rudy will say something. And uh, so we, we left, you know, a, a little. It's not, you don't want to hear. On, fly on the wall in the studio stuff. Yeah. It was, it was <laughs> basically so that you could feel like you were listening in to what happened. Has there been additional material where do you, where you decided, oh, come on, we don't put that in? Or is this what you have and you have put all in? 
we we put it all in when i look at the logs from that date um i see some other stuff now <clears throat> either they didn't record it i mean they're the same track so they're alternates mm -hmm. of the same tracks <laughs> either they didn't record it or something is or they they erased it mm -hmm. or recorded over it I, i'm not sure but this is everything that remains and it's um you'll, you'll see it's it's a solid you know they're it's a full album it's you fun. know it's 20 minutes and 20 minutes roughly aside cool and and kevin when you when you have this without wanting to go too deep into it but but when you master stuff like like this it's quite different than mastering an an an, an real record in a way or, or do you handle it the same um i would say we handle it pretty much the same um yeah just again it's not quite like an album because it's not going to flow quite like an album when it's a bunch of outtakes but uh, but you still have to sort of make it sound like it's supposed to flow one song into another you know it's it, mm -hmm. so we treat it that way good question from michael s are those limited editions or the tone po poet philosophy that they stay in print the idea is to keep them in print so no they're not limited it's a big pressing run um mm -hmm. by jazz standards <clears throat> but uh no they're they're not limited the old joke is they're limited to how many they can sell <laughs> that's good That's good. And also, how many can you get out of the pressing plant? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Capacity is, is uh, as you know. The pressing or the paper, the, the jackets? What is Both. The Both. Both, mm -hmm. Both the same. Still. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but okay. So uh, uh, I, I like, of course, the idea to keep those extremely important uh, records in print. I think that's that's the way to go. I, 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 I of course, like that. Um Okay, then we have so the stereo comes with the with the extra stuff. The extra stuff is mm -hmm. in stereo, then not in mono. Yeah, it's only in stereo. Um, as far as I well, we we know because we did a search. Um, if there ever were mono versions of the extras, they don't have them, or they've they we don't know. we don't know what happened to them. But this is this is what they have. So and the stereo have, comes with the add-ons and the and the booklet, and then we have the mono release, single disc, 33 and a third in a gatefold jacket. Yeah, yeah. it's um, single disc mono, and um, you know this was done during a time when um, Rudy was uh, he for about a year and a half, not quite a year and a half in 57 and part of 58, he was running parallel stereo and mono uh, tape decks. And so, you know, you actually have a dedicated full track mono tape running. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, on, a, on an important record like this, it behooves us to issue it that way because, you know, people have strong feelings about mono and stereo there are aspects I, I like about both. Um, you know, I will say when I put on the stereo and turn out the lights, you know, and maybe have an IPA going, might, might be an adult beverage involved. <clears throat> it's, it's like those guys are in the room playing to me. You know, even though This is early stereo for Rudy. The the horns, um, Curtis Fuller, uh, Train, and Lee Morgan are are leftish, and um, but there's so much bleed in Rudy's place that you don't really. I don't listen to it and hear some big hole in the middle. No. I hear um, the piano bleeding into the middle. Um, bass bleeding to the middle, every, drums bleeding to the middle too, to some extent, because it's such a um, small room in Hackensack. Although it's that early, because it's very early for stereo, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. But, you know, when you think about if you went to a club, if you went to a club and somehow magically those guys all came back to life and they were up on a stage, you you wouldn't have 
Lee Morgan on the left side of the stage and Train on the right side and Curtis Fuller standing in the middle. What would they, what would you see? You would see um, the horn players on one side or the other because they're playing unison lines in the heads. And so, you know, when I close my eyes, it's like, man, there they are. There they are. You know, it's, it's kind of like a time machine. The mono, I love for a different reason. This sounds like pandering, I suppose, but it's true. It's the record I grew up with. It's the record I fell in love with. Um, it was the mono version. So I put that on and it's, it's what I, re you know, it's, it's the record I'm so familiar with and, and love for a different reason. So I don't know if there's a right or wrong. It's just a different, they're just different ways to approach it. Kevin, your take on the mono and or the stereo. Can you share it with us? Well, uh, again, being that it was early stereo, um, I tended to prefer the, the later stereos when, where there was a piano in the middle, for instance, in the bass. But um, I don't have a strong preference either. I, I, I lean a little bit to the stereo, but um, the mono has a, for lack of a better word, a cohesiveness that mm -hmm. I really like. So, you know, we're, we're both good. Yeah. We're sure, both good. Sure, sure. Uh, one one question because I don't know right now. Maybe you can help. When the release 1957 was it released mono, stereo, or both? Mono, and then if I recall correctly, the stereo came out about a year later. They put the stereo oh. out, and you know the way we did the jackets. Blue Note in those days didn't have dedicated mono and stereo jackets. What mm -hmm. they did was they put um <clears throat> they would take the mono jacket and they put this stereo sticker on ah, it. okay so you know um everything else looks just like the mono jacket well we have what this is you know we have to show that it's it's the complete masters because it's a different mm -hmm. set mm -hmm. but we did do it like they did it back then they put a stereo sticker on um, you put a sticker or you printed it on it no no it's a It's a gold foil sticker. Oh, okay. Cool. Just, just like the way they were. Right, the original. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Great. Okay. And then, if I'm right, if I'm correct, then we have the first official Tone Poet CD. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're right. Okay. This CD belongs to the Tone Poet series. And an essay CD, is that right? There's an SACD in that Japan is going to put out, um, and um, I don't know if some of those will be available here or not. I'm not. I'll find out. I'm not sure about that. I just got in trouble with Don again. <laughs> But these are all mastered by by Kevin. It's not some separate. You know, this is um, this is all Kevin's mastering. You'll you'll hear that on the CD and the SACD. Um, the SACD is he does a separate pass. Well, Kevin, you should talk, talk about yeah, it. That's, that's fine. He's got a DSD recorder. Right. Right. Oh, there was a question there about dealing differently with mm -hmm. the stereo and the mono. Mm -hmm. I, I would say they're probably, th th there's not a major differentiation in how we deal with the two. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. So, I think the numbers of pre-orders are quite astonishing, I assume, because I, I've got so many comments. I ordered no, both. I ordered how both. do you know that? Yeah, because I see that on the comments when, when, I, when, I, when I announced our stream. There were so many who said, yeah, I will get that. I already ordered. I got both. I got both. <laughs> yeah, but it's of course, it's tempting. to uh, f First of all, you have this power of the series, and then you have the mono And the stereo with the add-ons to get both in this case, I think, really, really makes sense. No doubt about that. See? <laughs> well, Jorge, I would answer that by saying, yes, my new system is better than the system that I had when I was at Acoustech. So I think there'll be some slight improvements just due to that. Also, I just I want to throw this in here just because uh, we were talking about it a little bit before we went live. But 
Blue Train is my favorite Blue Note album of all time. So it was a thrill to do a special edition of it. I mean, it's just that's kind of the epitome of Blue Note in my in my book. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't get any higher than that. Plus, you have to you know remember in in Train's life, um, he um, let's be honest, he had been um, had problems with heroin all through the 50s and and in fact in december of 56 um you know he was with miles band for um you know that great uh that great group with red garland and philly joe and um and miles fired him you know miles davis who you know let's be real is not a saint I mean, he's a saint in my mind, but he wasn't a saint in the normal sense. Well, and this is after he'd played on Kind of Blue and, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Kind of Blue was a few. Was a, well, that a was few, after. That was yeah. after. Sorry. Um, and, but it dovetails into yeah. this because um, Train, you know, it kind of shocked him to get fired by Miles. And he got clean. So, you know, that's December 56. It took him a couple of months. <clears throat> And um, unlike, you know, some musicians relapse and relapse, what, you know, he never did. When he stopped, he stopped. And so, you know, it's fat, to me, it's fascinating to listen to his earlier records, which I, I, I love in spite of the conditions he may have been in when he made them. Uh, but on Blue Train, it's his first album after being clean he'd been clean five months when he made blue train and when you hear that opening track it's it's um so i'm getting <laughs> this song says i'm talking about it but you know but but that to me it's like train it's almost like this clarion call and you can just feel he's He's ready to, he's bursting at the scene. He's ready to go. He's got something to say. He's feeling great. And, you know, you can hear it all through this session. It's, yeah. it's a different energy and that he carried for the rest of his life. He, and he, it was his only album as a leader on Blue Note. Blue Note, yeah. And to Alfred Lyons, um, Alfred was asked if he had any regrets. This was about years later. And guess what he said? He said, um, well, there was one. Um, I had I had this guy, John Coltrane. And um, and I let him get away, but but maybe I can get him back. <laughs> and he never did come back. He he went on Atlantic and Impulse and yeah. everything he did. But but Alfred knew. He was like, oh my God. I let this guy get away. Yeah, what what I think that's quite interesting. What does it mean he let him go away? The other well, company just gave him more money, or how was it? In, in no, so so Coltrane was under contract to Prestige at the time. Mm -hmm. In fact, on the the album jackets, you'll see um, you'll see it says. Um, John Coltrane performs by courtesy of Prestige Records. That's he unusual grew. for an artist to be the leader on a record that signed to when he signed to a different label. He had some arrangement. Um, I don't know exactly what it was with Bob Weinstock of Prestige, but there was an arrangement, um, and uh, it wasn't too many years later that um, that they they both lost because Train went to Atlantic and made my favorite things and all mm -hmm. the other great things he did for Atlantic. Somebody just asked if they were all pressed at RTI and the answer is yes. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And another question, uh, you once answered that one and a half year ago, Kevin, but I found that so interesting. Maybe we go into it again. Tape degradation. How is the tape doing? It's great. There, there are no issues with that tape. Um, that didn't exist in the first place. I mean, you know, um, yeah. Actually, that, that's been true of most of the Blue Notes. There's very, mm -hmm. very few mm -hmm. that have any issues. 
Um, yeah, I, I found that they're properly stored and and they haven't been cut that many times. You know, mm -hmm. I think the prestige mm -hmm. stuff has probably been reissued more than the blue note stuff, wouldn't you say, Joe? Probably, and then you have to um, factor in. I mean, Blue Train's been reissued many times over the years, but was it from the the actual master tape, or was it from the safety, or was it in more recent era? Uh, it would have been done from digital. So whether that actual master, I mean, I like you. I know of the times it's been played because. We were there, <laughs> you know, music matters. And yeah. Um, so. One one question for the process of, of, of putting this this thing together. When did you start brainstorming? OK, we have this anniversary upcoming. What what do we do when 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 and how did you make the decision that Blue Train will become an exception of the music matters jazz hmm. rule? Well, that really happened. Um, two things were involved. Um, as far as how long, you'd be surprised. This goes back easily a year and a half or two years mm -hmm. um, because we involve um, the family, um, Ravi Coltrane and, um, and the estate and there's attorneys and, you know, it's um, you need approvals from everybody mm -hmm. as you as you would want you mm -hmm. want them to be proud and happy of what's happening here so when i saw and heard actually the um the alternate takes all of them and i didn't know i'm like everybody else, i didn't know there was that many i just knew what had shown up um if you looked real hard on um, a japanese cd you know you you, you could find these so I was surprised. And then, you know, you start looking at the times and realize well, this would be a whole second, se separate second record. Um, it's not just two tracks and you have a blank side or whatever. It's, it's a full album. And um, so that really differentiated. Um, and then later in the process, um, there was some a lot of pressure <laughs> to do a mono only mm -hmm. uh, because those mono tapes exist so i said sure yeah we'll we'll do that um e even though we did a mono mono only at, at uh, music matters mm -hmm. um but it was really the the stereo with the add-ons and the booklet and all of this stuff was the differentiator that made me see it in a different way. Cool. Thanks for the answer. And I love that question. Oh, that statement. Because, <laughs> yeah, I, I would love, if possible, maybe you can go into the problems that that would mean if you give us, when, whenever possible, the mono and the stereo. Maybe we can talk briefly about this topic. Well, when we've done a fair number of monos, and when I say a fair number, I'm thinking, you have to understand, Kevin and I work way out in front, way out in front. Mm -hmm. we're, we're next month's mastering is for titles that will come out in 2024. Which titles are those? <laughs> I'm not telling you. Yeah. <laughs> nice try, Michael. Nice try. Uh, I've, gotten in, I've gotten in trouble. I'm keeping my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> but but to answer your question, and, and you're gonna see um there's monos coming. Mm -hmm. uh, when it was recorded mono, when it's from that time, um it's mono. And you're you're we've been doing a fair amount of mono. Mm -hmm. Um when it's from the Inglewood Cliffs era, where he's only recording stereo and and the mono is a fold down from that, mm -hmm. then I'm not so interested personally in doing that. I know I know a lot of people don't have mono switches where they can just, you want to hear the fold down, hit the switch. Um, okay. Yeah. 
Um, but there's a more practical reason that if we were to do them all in stereo and mono, now you have two records, the price goes up, the pressing capacity, now you're going to have delays. You saw what happened with Blue Train. No, no Tone Poets for three months because we had a lot of records to press. Yeah, I can so imagine. So there's, there's practical consideration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, we record lovers, we jazz lovers tend to forget those things that is all has to be done. Totally understand. Uh, yeah, all the practical yeah. aspects. Yeah. It's a passion. I believe me, I totally get it. Hundred percent. This afternoon, I visited Rachel's uh, ghost live stream, and once more, thank you, Rachel, down in the mission control. She's again <laughs> handling all wow. those comments, and there was a was a great, great. <laughs> that's that's Hi, Ella. Hello, from Fitzgerald, my dog. Yeah, and, and that was a great question. I would like to forward, and the question was: uh, Are you going into maybe with the tone pause in the very, very early stuff, maybe even the ten-inch uh, releases? Are you planning on going that far back, or is there problems that stands against it? No, um, we may, because often what happened was uh, Blue Note would issue as 12-inch albums um, records that had been 10s, meaning they would take um, two 10s and turn it into a full 12. Mm -hmm. um, they, they did that with some frequency back then. Okay. And we've actually, we've done that. Um, there was a Clifford Brown we did at Music Matters that was originally 10. Um, I was on the phone with Don, was yesterday, talking about um, this very thing, actually, with a, with a title, with a particular title. This is a great question, too, in a way, because there are some Music Matters jazz titles that are really, really, really hard to get. And I'm not talking about money. They aren't there anymore. Hmm. Is that maybe a reason to redo them as tone poets? Or is that out of the question? Um, those would be done um, as classics that's under, um, you know, that's Jen, Jen, Jen Kurzman's program and also all done all analog by kevin and the young man uh, above us he is also right? the man behind the classic <laughs> yes yeah i stay busy <laughs> I, I can imagine i can imagine and also the classic series will go on like the tone poets i can imagine right so far yeah yeah, yeah we're yeah. we're way out on those too in terms of time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Um, how shall I put the next question? Why do you use or still use all the analog tapes as it seems to be the way to go nowadays is with DSD and digital? But you keep going with the analog tapes and that's the way you will provide yeah. with your releases. We do it because, um, you know, Blue Note owns those tapes. Um, sometimes people get confused and and mm. think, oh, how long did you get? the music there? matters. Well, or that in, they're thinking any, any label, you know, but how long do you get the tapes, you know, because you have to license them. And it's like, no, we don't have to license them. We are Blue Note. So yeah. to get tapes, you go to the tape vault. There's a wonderful man named Jack Arenas who runs it. And he happens to be a real, you know, kidding. Like, yeah, love you, Jack. Um, <laughs> he loves jazz. He loves what we're doing. And he's just the best. Like when you want to know, you know, we got to have the master and are there extras or Jack will go to the ends of the earth and he'll get them. And so, and then, a messenger comes and picks them up and drives them because mm -hmm. they're all in LA, drives them to Kevin's. And um, so it's a 
I'm not going to say paradise. it's easy, it's but... paradise, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, you, you, it's paradise. You don't have yeah, to exactly. uh, uh, negotiate and oh, and no. No. Yeah, that, no. All we have to do is ask. Uh, cool. Now what? I put up. Um, as, as some people aren't aware, but I've been getting a lot of questions recently. <clears throat> um, I've always filmed. Um, our mastering sessions. I don't mean the whole thing because mm -hmm. you want to sit there for hours and hours. But I'll do um, you know, like 30, 40 second videos that I put on my Instagram and my Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Uh, we, link, we link your Instagram in the video description down below so that the people can visit you on Instagram where you really, okay. really put out a lot of this informative, uh, beautiful, transparent stuff. We really appreciate that you you do it the way you do it yeah it's fantastic really well it, you know in some ways it's repetitive it always shows mm -hmm. you know I it's always, always a different tape joe <laughs> it's always right. different tape, but i always scan music over playing in the background <laughs> different music i scan over to kevin at the console and then pan to the master tape and then pan the short distance between you know the tape boxes are empty because tape reels are spinning on kevin's mm -hmm. studer and then we pan from there over to the cutter head cut, cutting. And um, and it's always, I realize it's always the same, but I've been doing it the whole time. So I, I will keep doing it because people, well, I, I we like. Don't always, we don't always start with the first song on the first track. Sometimes we break it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, you might have a favorite song that's the last song in the LP. So that's the one we happen to use, you know. That's right. Really? Oh, okay. okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not always. I, you know, I might, yeah, have a favorite and go. Ah, it's, that's the one I want to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's not always exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Switch up. When when Kevin Gray has done its magic, then it's time for the test pressing, right? Yes. And well, then first it goes to Doran Sour Beer at RTI. Mm -hmm. um, they're shipped uh, first overnight, so he has them 8.30 the next morning, and he processes them, um, starts the processing. You know, they're silvered, mm -hmm. plated, and then everything's sort of set in stone, as it were. Goes through the plating, and then they get, uh, they press test pressings. How many do they do when they do a test pressing? 20, 55? No, usually about... 12 or 15 or something like that. I have to add it up, but um, Don gets two. We always get two. Mm -hmm. And the reason we get two is um, two is, will tell you if there's um, a tick or a pop. Uh, and it's in the exact same spot on the second one, then you've got an issue with the stamper or the mother. Mm -hmm. And often they, you know, it's just a matter of like, they go back and clean it and take care of it. Mm -hmm. And then it's gone. <clears throat> if it's random, then, then that's indicative of nothing, really. That could be, you know, some dust fell on my turntable as the record was spinning. And so I always, I clean, I have an ultrasonic machine. I clean them before because I want to make sure I'm hearing exactly what's mm -hmm. on that pressing mm -hmm. and um, not, getting confused by something that's on the record, mold release, whatever might be there. So you get rid of all that. And then, um, and then you sit there with a stopwatch and you play them. And with RTI, they're really consistent. You know, once in a while, run into something. Mm. And uh, they've got a great QC guy out there <clears throat> that uh, Bryce, who um, I work with, and um, I'll say, hey, Bryce, you know, on both my copies, there's a tick at two minutes and 16 seconds on the third track. He'll go back. He'll check it out. Yep. Spotted it. Clean the mother. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all good. I'll send you uh, another test pressing. Do, are you still involved in when when do you get a test pressing to Kevin and, and listen to it? I don't No, I'm not. I'm not in that loop. Mm -hmm. But by, okay. by choice, I mean, I'm mm -hmm. just so busy cutting. Yeah, you know? of course, you are doing the next. <laughs> I can imagine. So, let me imagine something. So now you get a test pressing, mm -hmm. and you're not. 
do you do uh, do you listen to the music matters version in this case do you listen to the analog production version in this case uh, what is your you what mean is in, your scale in, with in Bluetooth? comparison with the test pressing what is your scale original do you listen to the original and compare it what is i, I used to listen a, i've got tons of originals um mm -hmm. you know it's it's just endless um <laughs> I, I used to do that a lot more. Mm -hmm. I don't so much. Well, he'll bring those in for mastering sometimes too. Yeah, yeah, so you'll see them in the videos because I'll bring those in um, and I'll shoot the cover, you know, just to make it obvious what we're listening to. Then you do the listening to the originals or, or other versions, Kevin, and, and, and see. Ah, okay. Okay, and that, at that step, you you compare and 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 develop right. a different... Not always, but sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But with with Blue Notes, Kev, Kev and I have been doing. I I could I wouldn't even. It's got to be hundreds, right? We've done so many between Music Matters and yeah, that you really get a bead on um, what Rudy was doing and mm -hmm. what what he put on the master tape. I talked about this many times and what he had to do to um to keep those records sold which we know he reduced bass so i don't listen to the originals so much when i get a test pressing because i know we're going to have more what was on the master tape yeah. and not have to do things to make it playable on on kitty players you know we assume you have a pretty good turntable Yeah. yeah, that's. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin, but I think this is the biggest difference between the originals, that you can cut them hotter. Is, is that correct? That you don't. Well, have to not so much hotter because well, mm -hmm. hmm. there's greater dynamics, but not necessarily hotter because Rudy was compressing. So actually, mm -hmm. the originals would probably be a little bit louder, if anything. But right. it's only because they're compressed. So we, mm -hmm. which he would do when he cut them so that's that's not on the master tape can you explain me what compressing means in analog times okay yeah uh, technically it would be peak limiting i don't think they were really using compressors back in those days but Patrick? it's just to to bring the peak levels down so that the overall mm -hmm. level is higher and okay. it was a very common practice uh, on, on every kind of music back in that day. This and it was so that nothing got lost when you were playing it on, a, on an inexpensive player, you know, versus a, the stereos or, or the, the mono, but the high end equipment of the day. Mm -hmm. um, if you're playing it on a small player, you want to be able to hear everything. And compression would help with that. And the equalization that Rudy would do in cutting also would help with that. Is that the headroom everybody is talking about, what you just described? Or is the headroom something different? Well, uh, head, headroom is, is basically using all of the dynamic range. I mean, if you use all of the dynamic range, there is no headroom. The headroom okay. would be above mm -hmm. the highest mm -hmm. peak level that you record. So I, I'm not quite sure how that equates to what we're talking about. But yeah. Okay, I think... Now we should start a bit of a question round. If you have any questions, now is the time. I will put them on screen somehow. Rachel is gone. Maybe she has lost her internet connection or I missed something. <laughs> okay, questions. Ah, yeah, the, the, sorry. Here, it came up. I know, I know. But <laughs> Chad Baker sings. The legend. Oh, no, never pressed again. It's uh, sorry, you're out of luck. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I thought, whoa, I hadn't heard that. <laughs> in, in this second, the Discogs price just doubled. <laughs> no, you know how long I had to wait to get my something else pressing? You know, it's like, yeah, geez. no, um, it will, of course, be pressed again. The all of that, all of that has to do with capacity all of it. Um, it's just limited. Believe me, Blue Note would love to be able to have all of it out there for sale at, at uh, now uh, Green Street. Oh, I saw that. Will there be a... Uh, no, that one's gone forever. There'll never be. Just I, <laughs> just I can't be dead. <laughs> But, um, too much fun, Joe. 
but, but um, you know, the good thing is, I think I have reason to believe that this situation will improve quite a bit mm -hmm. in the coming year. Mm -hmm. And so that all these things will get caught up with the represses and new, new, new additions will flow like they should. I think it's going to be better. It's, it's been difficult. It's been difficult. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm under the impression that there has been represses or one repress of Chad Baker's things, but it was like a drop in the ocean in a right. way, right? Yeah. What what will happen is um, they'll look at RTI and and maybe they have 400 jackets left of a title. Maybe it's Chad Baker sings. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So they'll press up. Um, they don't, they never press records that are going to sit outside of jackets. You don't, that you don't want because yeah. you're going to get dirty and you don't want that. Oh. Um, which goes to the other issue of printing. Printing can get just as backed up as um, pressing. Shortages of, of um, cardboard and things like that. No, it was a separate tape. My, my separate, answer, separate. Tape on that. Yeah. Hey, I yeah. wanted to mention something while we were on the topic of Chet Baker. Um, I, I think I can say this, okay? But uh, Jack Arenas was a huge help. This, this the vault guy at at, uh, at Blue Note on that one because the tape had been pulled apart at some point in history, probably back in the '80s or something. I think even up, earlier. Was yeah. it to make up yeah. some other albums? Mm -hmm. And he had to find all of the pieces for us to put that back in its proper sequence, like it had been released originally. And props wow. to Jack for that. He And he's also a huge Chet Baker fan. <laughs> you'll, yeah. you'll be seeing, um, you know, I'm going to be naughty here, but you're going to be seeing some more Chet Baker. And Jack, once again, was such a champion. He did the same thing, went back, um, found, you know, they had been put on different compilations, unhooked everything, put the master tape back as it originally existed. So yeah, you'll be, you'll be seeing some more in chat and you'll be seeing Chet Baker sings because it will get repressed. It may be getting pressed right now. I have no idea. Any plans for Blue Note opening its own pressing plant because it's quite common right now to do this. Any plans on the side of Blue Note? Not a dedicated Blue Note pressing plant. No. I mean, I love this future, question. but not right now. Oh, this is a good one. I have, yeah, I love it. I, I actually yeah. do not use tubes in my main mastering chain. I've, I've started a new endeavor with an all tube, all valve, from microphone to cutter head for my own label for a completely separate thing. Mm -hmm. but that's not being used in the mastering of the, of the Blue Nut stuff or anybody else's stuff. It's really good, by it's the way. It's just for me. <laughs> and Joe, Yeah, we're going to be collaborating on some things. Mm. It's really good. It's really good. Like Sorry, I, because Rachel is not here anymore. I have to now read and listen to you. It's not that easy. <laughs> okay. I, don't, I can't see comment. Well, I can see them when they get posted yeah. below, but I don't see any on the side. Uh, is, is, is undercurrent under the blue note umbrella? I don't know. E yes, undercurrent is um, is that Pacific Jazz? What label is that? I, it is. Um, I don't know the answer to that. I do. There might be a complication with the master tape. I vaguely remember hearing something. Um, but I, I don't know on that one. Um, Any reasons? Why isn't Blue Train available for pre-order on Amazon? Um, Kevin, can you call Jeff Bezos and ask him what the hell is going on? <laughs> I don't think they're usually available for pre-order this early, right? I mean, we're talking right, about September right. 17th. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. I can't imagine we'll, you. You probably will be within the next couple of weeks. Oh. I would imagine. A month early, maybe. Mm -hmm. Are you able or willing to talk about numbers when it comes to the blue train? Yeah, you know, blue, uh, blue note doesn't get into those specifics. Mm -hmm. 
but um you know i could um say there's a scientific term um pardon my language but it's called a a shitload um <laughs> it's quite a few i can imagine kevin we actually do um we do our uh, digital pass at the same time as we cut the record so it has everything that we did on the record on the it would be high-res download i mean there is an SACD or will be i guess on hmm. well for for the japan on the blue note but but yeah but yeah so <clears throat> same same sauce on both it's a it's a parallel just because i know people are gonna we don't want them to get confused his his analog path is all analog but the signal and kevin you can speak that signal signal gets um off the board there's another right. path that you send over to go to your converter digital recorder yeah mm -hmm. your recorder i'm sorry oh yeah okay what is the story behind the piano solo mm -hmm. on blue train blue train did rudy van Gelder copy it from an alternate take so what happened there, um, and uh, this is actually in the booklet, um, because it involved surgery on a master, which, you know, gets you very alert when you do that. Um, so yeah, the piano solo on the master take, which is take nine of Blue Train, <clears throat> actually comes from wow. take eight. Kenny Drew's solo is really from take eight. So when we put take... About that. Yeah, when we um, when we put when we transferred take eight, we had to carefully, and and you see the splice. You know, it's not that because you can see where the tape is, where the splice is, and we lifted that, put it back into take eight, so that that plays as it was recorded, and then when the transfer for the the full, you know, the normal album. Um, put it back into take nine and then did that. So I don't know if that was clear enough, but so that you'll, you're going to hear the same exact piano solo from the master take actually in both take eight and take nine. Okay. Uh, blue train. And take, take eight. If we can just, some of these, I found the alternates really fascinating um, because uh you know, the solo, Lee Morgan, understand, Lee Morgan was 19 years old when this record was recorded. And the consistency of what he does, of what Kenny Drew does on all the takes is astonishing. You know, these tunes aren't, you know, they're not, Moments Notice is not an easy tune to approach as a player. Blue, Blue Train is a, is a blues, so the form is fairly standard. Moments notice is not. It's a, it's a bitch. Um, but Lee Morgan and these guys, they, they just ate it up. So, and you can hear the arrangements evolve, like the yes. early takes of Blue Train. I love that. It's fascinating, right? You know, mm -hmm. it, you can hear Train simplifying. You know, the early take. Um, Paul Chambers is answering that line. So, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, and Paul Chambers is going, doo -doo 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 -doo. you know, and you're kind of going, wait, I'm, that's not what I'm used to hearing. <laughs> and then yeah. you hear Train understands simple, we're going to simplify this. It's going to be better. And you hear it happening. And it's, he's right. It's, um, yeah, you, you, you'll, you'll hear, you'll hear. You just gave me chills down my spine just coming <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Right. Totally. <laughs> okay. What do we have now? Uh, somebody gave us a thank you, and we do appreciate it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was very kind. Okay, next next question. Again, Chad Baker. Yeah, someone <laughs> asked you. I like that question somehow. Name your both, Joe and Kevin. You can choose who who's goes first. Your three favorite non-jazz artists oh non jazz non-jazz 
Okay. Um, do you, Kevin, do you want to go first, or I mean, <laughs> Beatles? <laughs> that's that's not a tough. You're one cheating. <laughs> I, I'm cheating. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, over what era? You know. No um, era. There are three favorites. Oh, uh, thank yeah. You are welcome. Um, yeah, yeah, Beatles, Stone. I mean, I, I grew up in the British Invasion, so the Beatles, the Stones, the Who, um, I mean, uh, the Kinks, uh, yeah. Those are four. <laughs> well, okay, three. Right. Beatles, yeah, Be Beatles, Stones, and the Who, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Joe, now we have some, have some time. What are your three favorites? Well, one, I mean, you know, uh, I grew up in the same era, so Beatles for sure. Um, Bob Dylan, I'm a huge Dylan freak. I like, um, um, which may, you know, this is unusual in some senses, but I love the modern era Dylan. Um, I love his recent album, Rough and Rowdy Ways. I just, I just think he's amazing. He's out there at 80 years old, um, still creating, you know, he's not doing greatest hits. He's playing the new album because that's what he's into. So yeah, I, that's that. quite stunning. And he's it? reinvented himself so many times. Yeah. I mean, Crazy. you look at the mid series seventies, you know, blood on the tracks and planet waves compared to the sixties. And then you, you look as he went forward and it's just, yeah, yeah he, he never keeps doing the same thing ever. So, Have you been yeah. involved with Bob Dylan uh, mastering? Did you master some records from Bob Dylan, Kevin? Oh, Kevin, I think, have you? Say have that you? again? Did Dylan? Have you ever mastered in some, never, huh? No, no, not that I can Beatles? recall. I think I would remember. Yeah, Beatles, not the who? No, no Beatles, no Stones. Who? I've done, you know, who's next. Um, okay. I've, I've done box sets on the Kinks. That was yeah, all very fun. Course, yeah. You know, the, the mono, the stereo. by the way. It was mostly mono, but the, the LPs, the EPs, the, the uh, singles. Yeah, that was that was very fun. Very I very have fun. a good question for Mr. Joe Harley. Also, hmm. quite off topic. What do you think? How big are the chances for a Beatles monobox repress? Well, I mean, I know the guy to ask. Um, yeah. Just in fact, his name is Guy. His name is Guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Works for um, for uh, UMG in uh, London, and is involved with those. Um, I'll ask. I, I we we communicate. I will ask. I don't know the answer. I know it's a very expensive box to to put out, but I don't know the answer to that. Joe, a documentary on the concept and execution of the project would be sweet. Any chances? I think you're talking about the production process of the uh, uh, Blue Train. Well, you're going to see um, in a few weeks, maybe mid-ish August, <clears throat> some, some videos that show not my little amateur 40 second jobs that you see on my Instagram and Facebook, but you'll see some videos um, that were done at mastering. And you'll also see um, in the long form, you'll see um, following every step of what happens at the plant. So, and I mean, from the woman receiving the lacquers. Um, I've seen the video, so it wasn't Doran. It was this other uh, woman um, opening them up, getting them out. And then every step of processing, most people haven't got a clue all the things that happen in plating. And it's really, really well done. People will, you know, the whole Blue Note team went out to RTI um, specifically to observe um, this happening with Blue Train. So Don Don was there, the whole team, uh, Justin Seltzer, Jen, Rachel Jones, the whole team, Debbie Valerino. It's sort of a mini documentary. It, it is in cool. terms of, um, 
that process of ingestion and what happens. And it ends with, um, um, after all the steps, it ends with Bryce in front of uh, some pallets of records of blue trains that are being shipped to Germany, Michael. <laughs> so I think that's coming out in a few weeks. Cool. That's great. Um, I, what, whatever happened to BLP 1553, the only missing title in the Blue Note catalog? Can you share something about this? This, this must be a hardcore collector because they yeah. talk in that language. They, they, they don't use, we wouldn't say, you know, what the artist and the title is. We're just going to say the number. number. I'd have to get my... Um, I'm looking. Book out. <laughs> yeah, what is 15? I don't have them all memorized. I have a few of them either. Maybe whoever asked that can uh, make it easy for us and put the title up. Well, it says on Blogspot, it's a catalog number of Blue Note album that never existed. Oh, that's okay. probably why I asked the question. No. Uh, I don't know. Michael Cascuna might know the yeah, answer. Yeah, he would be the guy to ask. Um, so it's a number that didn't get assigned. Maybe just a mistake. Is that possible in that time? Awesome. Or maybe it's incredible. Never got skipped over, sort of. Maybe it's an amazing thing that they're just keeping hidden. And they don't Probably. share with people. The I secret keep... John Coltrane. <laughs> I keep seeing Paul Desmond Dave Brubeck mentioned here. Uh, on Blue Note? Mm, not in the 1500 series. No. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Very weird. Kevin, a question for you from Oscar. Is the mixing process similar for every record? Is it always, in a way, the same, or do you face different tasks and, and, and difficulties? Are we talking about Blue Notes here? I mean, there's no mixing because it, mm. Rudy Van Gelder, you know, the two-track tape is his original mix. There's mm. no multi-track, and we're not doing any mixing. We're only mastering, um, which means we're adjusting levels, we're adjusting equalization a little bit on some tracks and things. So um, I'm not quite sure how that relates. Uh, well, let me mention one thing here, because I, I did mention this to you, uh, Michael, before we went live. And that is that having started this label and now doing recordings direct to two track, mm -hmm. it's, it's only increased my respect for everything that Rudy did on these records. Um, it was everything I could handle to do a, a, a quintet. And that was only for like uh, three of the eight tracks on the album that I did. And, uh, oh man, my hat is off to him to be able to do all that mixing live so consistently well, album after album after album. And, yeah. you know, we're not just talking Blue Note here. We're talking Prestige and Verve and, you know, everything else. Something else. So, yeah. And, and I would also mention, and I'll mention this again. Uh, the limitations of the recording tape that they were using in the day, you know, which was the only thing they had basically was, was 3M Scotch 111 from 1948 to 1963 mm -hmm. or four. Mm -hmm. And um, the headroom, we were, you were asking about headroom. The headroom was much less on that tape. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in other words, you had to be in a really sweet spot between overloading the tape or having tape hiss. There was not a lot of dynamic a bill, you know, capability with with the actual recording tape that they were using. So, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine having that imposed over what I was having to do, you know, on a live recording. And you'll you'll hear on various Blue Notes. Sometimes people don't don't know they don't realize that um, they're like, well, can't you fix? There's a little brief moment of overload on something where the horn comes in and we can hear it. It's like no, because it's it's only going down live, and so what you're hearing is Rudy going, "Oh shit," you know, and <laughs> looking over to his not faders as we now know the them, rotary. rotary, and turning it down, and you you hear it, and so yeah, there's moment. That personally, I find them. It, it's like Rudy's the sixth musician kind of, you know, because. Mm -hmm performance very much it's a performance totally. what he's doing too 
But I have never had a tone point where I could hear Rudy van Geller said saying, "Oh shit, I would love to." Have that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he's he's in a separate room. It just didn't go on the tape. Yeah, he just didn't hear it. Damn it. I bet he. I don't know. <laughs> I bet it was said more than once. I'm just I guessing. Right. But you told us on the on on the extra stuff on the stereo, we actually can hear Rudy van Geller, right? Did yeah, I, right on the talkback mic. You know, he'd mm -hmm. he'd be cool. Yeah, That's he'd be cool. talking to the musicians. Can't wait for that. Okay, <laughs> next question. There's an interview with Rudy. Okay, we can. It's a longer one. There's an interview with Rudy regarding the 50 50 system to get mono while doing stereo, where he does not like to copy analog tape to analog tape. Are the results worse than doing DSD from tape? It's your area, Kevin. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. All, all they were saying. Yeah, there, what, okay. In the early days, he, as as Joe already mentioned, they were running two machines. So they had a mono tape and they had a stereo tape. Mm -hmm. After Rudy decided to only record in stereo two track, they would just take the, the the two channels on the stereo tape and mix them together. So you're cutting again from the analog tape. There's no other thing involved, and there would be no need to make a copy or you know in whatever format. So you just take the stereo tape. Combine the two tracks to mono, and 50-50 means that they're they're transferred equally the two channels. You know, in some very rare cases, I don't remember ever seeing one, but you know they might have said you know have one channel up a couple of dB or something over the other for the mono balance. But I don't think he because he mostly listened in mono. I don't think that was ever an issue on Rudy's mm -hmm. stuff. And and imagine, no, I don't think there's ever been an interview. Imagine that um, what he was dealing with. So not only you know what kevin was mentioning you know the 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 difficulty the challenge of doing live to two track he's running two decks at the same time which means you have to start and stop two decks at the same time and then when it comes time to do editing you have to do twice the work you know an assembly it's twice the work so i i'm sure he at some point in mid 58 went heck with this um, yeah. I'm just going to fold the stereo. <laughs> You've mentioned that. That's a good question. I don't know if you can answer it, Joe. <laughs> um, yeah. I've, well, I probably shot my mouth off, which I tend to do sometimes um, somewhere. Someone probably asked me and uh, somewhere, and I probably said we were intending on doing that. The question is about the transition label. And... Um, Yes, we will be. We will be doing some things. Hell, I don't know, Kevin. Maybe, maybe we already have. I don't know. Hard to say. Hard to say. This was a concrete question. You are free to answer now, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, we're, we're we're we have to try. We, and we don't want to announce. We, we, we don't want to make any the announcements stuff. Here. That, that's <laughs> part of the hobby. Especially since we're so far away, you know. Yeah, yeah, these are um, Chet Baker. Be no, never. Mm -mm. <laughs> we, we have that. We we already discussed that. Yeah, the answer yeah, is yes. They will course, all be. Of course, it will be pressed point. again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we keep RTI busy. Mm. Mm. Okay, I've seen this question now so often. He's writing it over and over. Maybe. We go into it and then what are the overall conditions of the Fania label master tapes? Mm -hmm. Is it the salsa genre, a different animal challenging to remaster? Um, oh. No. And, you know, that stuff has been kind of fun. I'm I'm not a huge fan of salsa, but uh, but there's been some great stuff on that. Willie Colon and uh, the Fania All Stars. And yeah, it's uh, but the tapes are all in very great shape. Um yeah, those those are owned by Concord now. I think they bought the label recently. So it's it's amazing. The blue the, the uh, jazz and blues station here in Los Angeles, K Jazz, uh, made that a big part of their big uh, fun drive uh, a few weeks ago. So mm -hmm. that was interesting. I, I think I know the answer, but come on, it's a serious <laughs> question. I doubt that. Uh, 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 unlikely. Unlikely. In fact, uh, Michael, we can break the news here. 
Michael's changing the name of his channel to 33 RPM um, audio file. No, I'm not. Just kidding. <laughs> no, <I'm> not. <laughs> You're so bad, Joe. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can imagine the same reason uh, because more materials, longer periods, more production, this this kind of stuff. And and I, I was um, I was ex Packing, if you ever will do a 45 in the tone points, my thought was it will be the blue train. But <laughs> yeah, if if ever. And and so I think with the blue train, you answered it already. I mean, I always say never say never with blue oh, yeah. train. Yeah. But um, nothing. It's a little hard to imagine. Um, but nothing planned. Yes, yeah. I, <laughs> I think there's a joke in there. I think there is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, could Kevin tell us more about? Okay, yeah, why? Sure, sure, sure. I'd love to. Can you tell us more about the new land label, or will Joe not? <laughs> forget the last part. The new land label. Can you tell us is, more? Is that meaning my label? Is that what? I think he means your label. I think you, yeah. exactly. It, it's going to be called Coherent Records. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a wacky concept that I came up with in 2005, okay. thinking, wouldn't it be nice to be able to get modern sound uh, mm -hmm. or, or vintage sound with modern artists, is what I'm trying to say. Ah, cool. Um, right so right. I was thinking, you know, well, let's see, that, that was entirely within the tube era, you know, the mm -hmm. 55 to 65 kind of uh, vintage. And so uh, I started out building vacuum tube microphones and then went yeah. and built a va all vacuum tube mixer and then i bought a studer c37 uh tube machine and refurbished that and then the disc cutting system was what really took a lot of time and work mm -hmm. and effort but uh, it's all finished and we're putting out our first release as soon as we can get the jackets done it's it's in, <laughs> it's with the okay. graphics guy right now uh, we okay. should have that finished hopefully in a week or two and then it's up to stouten or whoever we go with for jackets so and, wow. and it sounds, I, I've got the test pressings. It, you know, it's, it's like if Rudy, this, you know, this sounds sacrilegious, but you know, it's like Rudy, but better. Um, Thanks. That's, that's, that's huge. Thank you. Well, and, and here's another thing, like Kevin's room is, uh, we actually have, um, the um, the layout of Rudy's Hackensack house, and his room is very similarly sized to the Hackensack place, and so it's not a big room, which is works. Kevin can you talk to this, but it works in your favor because you don't get these long delays. You know, mm -hmm. everything's kind of tight. You can put the drums and piano, and it works beautifully. Anyway, the results are just i think they're stunning they're just amazing i'll wait to you so you really went to the whole nine yards with with tube microphones everything wow right i mean i was building clones of existing microphones mm -hmm. neumann u47s mm -hmm. neumann m49 c's um akg c12s um i have a neumann sm2 stereo microphone and and so yeah it, i have a nice complement of mics uh, I have more mics than I have inputs for on the console, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, it gives me some choices, you know, but um, yeah, it's, it, 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 it was so funny when we set up the very first demo session, um, we set up the microphones and the musicians started playing and we went back into the control room and opened up the pots and my producer standing behind me went, Oh my God! It sounds like a blue note, <laughs> and we're like high fiving each other. It was like you know, uh, mission accomplished. <laughs> cool. Uh, any chance that we can see this release this year, or is that? I hope good? so. I'm really, okay. really, really cool. hoping so. I mean, we've got approved test pressings. Mm -hmm. It's just the graphics right now. That it's are, the uh, jackets, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Show you what it's gonna look like. Yeah. Show us. I don't know if it'll look very good but that's that's our album cover let me see if i can get where i can yeah you can see that. atkins shapes and sound okay already noted great glasses by the way and here's 
back cover. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get it. There we go. But but this is really very interesting because I don't know where we have discussed this topic, uh, uh, which artists nowadays uh, uh, um, does it analog? Not many. Maybe Gillian Welsh. I don't know. But, mm. but there's, there's a yes. few. There's a few that are still mm. recording analog, but, but no, they're but not that. normally recording direct to two track live. Mm. You know, yeah. I don't with mean no, like with with live no audience. From, you know, like like the way Rudy did it. So we're yeah. we're trying to kind of bring that back. We've got some great ideas cooked up for the next year. So we'll see how that all. Right, Joe. We'll yeah. Well, once you're in the flow, you can keep them coming. <laughs> that's that's the idea. You know, right now. For the next couple of years, I think maybe two titles a year would be great. Um, eventually down the road, I'd like to put out maybe four titles a mm -hmm. year. I think anything more than that would be a little overwhelming, especially if I keep mastering. <laughs> so you got to keep okay. mastering. <laughs> I say if you for you, Joe. One round of questions, and then somebody asked a question. I saw it yeah. flashed by earlier mm -hmm. about tube cutting electronics or something. Did mm -hmm. you? What was that? I have no idea. It came and went really quickly. <laughs> maybe maybe if, he's, if he's still watching, questions. please yeah. please put that question again. I don't know. Anyway, you can put that one back up again for the other. Any plans to dig back pre fifteen RC into five thousand one series like the classic series did with Herbie Nichols? Yes. <laughs> that was a fast one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ask, my, ask my wife that question um not this year <laughs> but um yeah actually uh, we haven't really taken a real vacation since before covid like kevin before. doesn't even sleep <laughs> I, I think no. so too and this day has 28 hours he just waits he doesn't sleep he just waits Beach boys kevin question for you sources used uh well I can say, with the exception of like the, um, uh, what was it, uh, Pet Sound Stereo, that was a digital mix, but I think it went to analog tape, and we did cut it from the analog. Everything else that I can remember in that set was all from analog tapes, but no, it wasn't all necessarily from original masters, because some of the Beach Boys tapes disappeared like in the 80s, so... Okay. You know, it was all That's as close to the original analog tape as we could get, and it was all analog, with like one or two exceptions out of twenty some releases. One question, because somebody told me that when you take a tape out of the vault, somebody writes on this tape taken by Joe Harley, 29th of July, 2022, right? On the right. tape, okay. So how can right. those? Tapes but of course, if the tape if the tape disappears, mm -hmm. those those notes are often inside the tape, <laughs> so you don't know where it went last. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, that's not always the case. Uh, like Warner, I'm sure has really good records on what yeah. went where and when, but not everybody. Love that question. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Nothing. I mean, we we we've. We're talking about some things, um, but this pressing situation, and yeah, there there are some things that have been contemplated that I'm excited about, but this pressing plant situation has to resolve because box sets are really, um, they, they clog things up. Um, and we're doing pretty big runs. So when you have, you know, a box set, it's a lot of records. But yeah, there's once it gets straightened out, you'll see some things. Toneport, Art Pepper, Chet Baker, this year. Um, I think it's either December. We just um, that's an interesting question because we literally were doing the approvals on the artwork um, mm -hmm. last week. On that, I think it's. I don't have my schedule in front of me, but it's either December or January. I think that's correct. Cool. Waiting for this one, too. 
is blue note moving to clear source to package provenance yep. labeling sparse code you know <laughs> this is a <laughs> well i have seen people um you, you know this phrase um that's on the stickers um which i thought was pretty clear but i guess all of a sudden it isn't so clear you know clear mastered from the original analog tapes um and people have suggested cut from the original analog tapes uh, it used to mean cutting in my day yeah me too so i i figured that was clear and then the fact that you can literally go online and watch it being done and look at the tape box but we might um when we run out of stickers and have to print them again maybe we'll say cut from because some people like that better uh, the answer to that question is no. I'm kind of keeping the two things totally separate. Any technical reasons or, or what, what is the reason? Well, <laughs> um, in terms of transparency, I think that my solid state system is about as transparent as you can get. Okay. I don't think that putting tubes in it would enhance it in any way. Mm -hmm. When I'm trying to make something that sounds vintage, that's why mm -hmm. I went for tubes. Mm -hmm. okay. But... Um, yeah, so it, 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 they're kind of apples and oranges. Okay, so Joe, should I give away my big secret here on the tube, a tube, a tube release? Go for it. Okay, I, you're getting an exclusive here, Michael. Uh, about uh, 2020, uh, the record store day release of the album War Greatest Hits. Yeah. Uh, Warner doesn't even know this. I cut that on my all tube system because I just wanted to test it out and mm -hmm. see how it sounded. And mm -hmm. it was a weird thing because I'd been doing a lot of tests with it and it was going <laughs> it was going back and forth. This I would put in the, the tube system like when I shut down for the weekend and then it would get moved out by Sunday night for Monday morning. And yeah. I was uh, I got in the tapes on on War Greatest Hits and I yeah. went, hey, I remember this stuff sounded pretty good. So I, I put up the tape and I went, wow okay i'm leaving my tube system in i'm gonna cut it monday morning and then i'll pull it out after i've cut that so that's the only thing on the market that's been cut with my tube system actually it's, i shouldn't say all tube because it was only the whole tube cutting electronics package it still used my normal console and my normal tape machine but um but yeah it was it's with the all tube cutting electronics i, I played Thanks it for sharing this Wow. And get, get the gold splatter version because that's the one that, yeah, that's that the one. Kevin, there there are other versions you, you want to make sure. It was the record store day 2020, I believe. Yeah. So no, I don't, I have to wait before the video gets live. Thank you. And I order the Discord on my Discord and then I put it. No, I don't. <laughs> so I, thanks a guy for was sure. over last yeah. night and I played that. And um, when I really, when I wanted to like just blow people's minds, I put that on and they're just like, wait, what? <laughs> and I said, right? Yeah. Here, here's the deal. Man, uh, Kevin cut that. I, I love the sound of both of my systems. You know, I'm like a father, you know, I, I it's it's hard to pick your favorite yeah. son or daughter. Um, but, mm -hmm. but I don't want to get into competing with myself. That's why I'm not offering this mm -hmm. to clients mm -hmm. because I would be moving, you know, I have the solid state rack on one side of the room and the, you know, next to the lay, then I have the tube system on the other side. I have to switch them whenever I do anything with the tubes. It's a, it's a major, it's a half a day setup to go back and forth. I have to recalibrate and everything. You know, everything. It's just, so but yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm I don't quite sure nowadays that the people, a lot of audio files, uh, will be loving your idea of putting out nowadays recording in this vintage style. I'm 100% sure that people will love that. I have no I, idea. Uh, I, I appreciate that, Michael. I, I hope you're right. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm that's quite why sure. I did it. I'm, I'm um, quite sure too, Michael. I've heard it. It's you can go, so you can go on to Michael Fremer's old site, Analog Planet. Mm -hmm. I think it was mm -hmm. around January 10th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did put up some sound files and high res of that first, my first recording, the, the, the Kristen Edkins. Uh, of course, it's, you know, you're not hearing the tube cutting chain in there because it only goes up through the tape machine and then to the digital. But, um, but, but it is up there. So you can hear everything through to the tape machine and then in high res. 
Yeah, Joe, I know it's a very easy but very difficult question. Can you explain uh, this in your words? Well, let's see. Uh, on the Tone Poet, it's, you know, I have the input of Joe Harley, which I, you know, value highly. And on the classics, I'm kind of on my own. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know how else to put it. Classics uh, go to optimal. They're optimal for pressing. Yeah. So there's some differences there. Yeah. Um, the but, jackets, uh, my and, big and, yeah, well, it, you know, it's it's not quite the, and, and the as prize, high end a line as the Tone Poet series. It's just not. And the price, they are very reasonable in price. Yes. Not not that the Tone Poets aren't, but but they are right cheaper due to the jackets and 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 no gatefolds. Yeah. You know, talking Hello. about price, it's been a challenge. Um, Every, I mean, in our visit to RTI, you know, the uh, price of nickel, the, uh, which is used in plating, <clears throat> um, the price of the PVC pellets, we use, you know, these, the best pellets. Mm -hmm. um, and then anyone who owns records may have noticed they're heavy. And, um, you know, this, these pallets going to Germany, <laughs> the, the cost to ship to Germany is, or anywhere, is way more than it used to be. Um, so it's been a challenge. No, no question. I mean, everybody knows this. Everything is. is Delivery you know, chains, uh, uh, prices. It's right now. It's it's tempting. It's it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it this is. is easier to answer. When are the 2023 tone ports being announced? I would guess. Um, we will, f let's see, we're supposed to finish up, um, you don't usually announce a whole year's worth of titles at once, right? I mean, they're, no, no, we, 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 oh, have you? Have you? Yeah. Okay. um, I might be off by a month, but I think we conclude this series in January. I think that's correct. And oh, do then, it right here. Then you have done it. Then you don't. <laughs> and the next one starts um in february I, I think and um i'll mention you know i've mentioned a, one or two in other places but um one of the titles it'll lead with is a, gr a really great one um andrew hill's dance with death is one of them um and uh you know there's gonna be towards the end <laughs> there'll be some things from the modern era and we've been incredibly fortunate um we keep getting analog masters which in the digital era okay uh, particularly things that were recorded at sears sound so um it's it's been exciting you know these have never they've only been out on cd and in many cases the, the analog tapes have never been assembled so we'll have um, Steve Jenowick over at Capitol, you know, assemble them, put them together. Um, and uh, it's phenomenal. I mean, I've been listening to um, a particular session that um, I've had on CD, and then I listened to the test pressings, and the CD just sounds like a broken toy by comparison. I mean, I, it sounds harsh. Sorry, Blue Note. It's Blue Note CD. But... Um, it's exciting and that's happened that's happened frequently i'm always shocked when um jack says well you know we also have it on analog tape <laughs> be, oh well you don't need to that's we'll take we that yeah we'll take that so anyway yeah the take on the mofa situation i think it's easy answered i i i, I go forward and say that your answer always has been the same. You have been transparent. You are waving with the tapes all over the place. You showed <laughs> us, you shared us. I think, in my opinion, do your own, own, own answer. I think that's what you can do. And that's that's a kind of an answer in a, in a way. I mean, I'll say that I'm a huge Miles Davis fan. And I think, um, I know, because I have original... Um, copies that I bought when they came out of um, 
you know, Nefertiti and ESP and Philae de Kilimanjaro and Miles and this, all those great records, you know, with the quintet, you know, with Wayne, Herbie, Ron, Tony, Miles. And the MoFi editions of those just, just smash the, um, the, the ones I have. Uh, I mean, I have, I have them both now, so I don't play my originals because the MoFi's are just vastly better. But the, to answer the question, what anyone else, the, I, I know what we do and all the details and Kevin knows what we do and all, all the details. I don't have knowledge of um, the internal, what goes on at other places. I've got my hands believe me more than full with what we're doing well, are the skilled guys waiting <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll uh, see yeah. <laughs> exactly who who says i'm gonna die <laughs> exactly but this is a nice question in a way When, you, when you're familiar with a record like Blue Train, like uh, uh, some of this Lee Morgan stuff, is it in a way easier to do it again, to go all, all over it again? Or is it same process and, and, and same thing as ever? Interesting question. I mean, I, uh, I, I, mean, I know you don't, I mean, For Blue Train, it's not like Kevin got out his old notes to see, oh, okay, right. I'll just do it like I, you know, it, we, it's listen to fresh and you approach it fresh. Um, but uh, well, I wouldn't say it's really faster for something we're familiar with because we're kind of taking a new look at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ru Rudy, I think, uh, Michael, we, I may have discussed this on the last one, but there are patterns to what, mm -hmm. you know, there's certain things you run into in Hackensack. And, um, and we you know, spot it, Kevin sees, you know, okay, this thing is happening. Uh, yeah, what's the date? It's this date. Well, that, you're right, that's when this was happening. And then when he goes to Inglewood Cliffs, you have maybe a slightly different set of things and after doing so many you kind of know by date what you're likely to find and 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 the other element is these these albums mostly were done in a single day and so it's not like a pop record where you've got you know first track was recorded in berlin second track was in la um, by a different producer and then you've got wild differences track to track <clears throat> that, that that an engineer would have to deal with with rudy it's it's simpler mm -hmm. Not can i answer you. this one this one joe what is uh oh well yeah Go for it, it is awesome <laughs> I, i mean <laughs> we never i mean joe and I, i i i can speak for joe we never tire We never tire of this. Mm -hmm. It's it is as close to being a fly on the wall in Rudy's studio as you could possibly mm -hmm. get, and uh, yeah, no, it's it's an honor. It is just an honor to be able to work on this catalog. I mean, some of the finest jazz recordings of all time. So, I mean, yeah, it's great. It, it, we we always joke about, gee, it's a tough job, but somebody's going to do it. <laughs> you, know, you, you know these records, or I've known them my my whole life. And you, so they're kind of locked in. Okay, this is the way they sound. It's always a shock putting up the master. It's it's like, wow, I didn't know that before, and I didn't hear this before. And listen to those dynamic. You know, it's always this sort of sense of awe when you put up the master. This is quite of a of an interesting question because has this maybe something to do that you are working direct with and for blue note does that there's not the licensing fee involved yeah um tps or um well yeah that's part of it there's not like i again i don't know <clears throat> of course. you know thankfully i'm only involved in the content creation part i don't get involved in the sales department 
Um, but they can mention that this might be a reason because there is no <laughs> licensing in, in a way, right? Well, that so would like, be part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, you don't license to yourself. And that's okay, a, nine, healthy, 90 a minutes. healthy expense on doing a, a reissue if you're mm -hmm. a reissue label. Mm -hmm. 90 minutes, gentlemen. Oh, and, gosh. Uh, really? Oh, you're right. Oh, it's gone fast. Yeah. It was gorgeous. Thank you hopefully, so much. Hopefully we didn't bore anybody to death. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. It was it fun. Look, I don't think so. I th you made my job and my evening really, really easy. It was a real pleasure. Fantastic. Same. Yeah, I'm going to give you some props pleasure. now, Michael. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I spoke with uh, Gary Salstrom about a week ago, yeah. and uh, we were talking, and he said, you know, of all the guys that are doing these podcasts about vinyl, I like that guy 45 RPM in Germany. I said, "Yeah, I do too." <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe because I, I, my, 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 uh, uh, my, my, my English skills are small, and that helps. In that I've regard. never found that an issue. Yeah, I think they're great. Okay, yeah. yeah, thank you very much, and give my greetings to Gary. I will do quite, that. We, we speak nice almost weekly. That. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Can't wait for the blue train. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. Bye. <laughs>